Anirudh, the pleasure. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, Cadence has been uh, a known feature in Silicon Valley. I don't think your, your, your building is also not missed by anyone on the Montague Expressway. The question first I have is, before I come to the design part, the one thing that stands out that has been standing for the last decade or so is that Cadence has always stood out as one of the most favored companies to work for employees. For a company to build and retain that culture, it has to start from the top, the leadership. So I wanted to learn from you since you've been there for a few years. You know, how do you, you know, build that culture and let that culture imbibe with all the other employees? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you. Great to be here and thank you for the question. I mean, culture is super critical, you know, because, and I think what happens is a lot of people talk about it, you know, everybody wants to have a good culture, but first thing is important is you have to do it, you know, you have to demonstrate it. You know, what employees are, you know, employees are smart. So, of course, I can say we want to have a good culture, but they want to see it in action. So, words are important, but actions are more important, okay. And, you know, we always pride ourselves, because we are a software company, and the intellectual property of the software company is the people, is the team. And we always have focus on team, technology, and customers. Because if you don't have the right team, you can't build the right technology, and you can't serve the right customers. So it's very important to start with the team and we want to have a high performance culture. So what does that mean? You know, I think there are at least three parts to it. The first part is that, you know, there has to be a culture of, of, of trust and integrity. You know, that's the underlying foundation of, so I and all the key people in the company and all the employees, you have to say what you mean and then do what you say. So that's super critical. The next part is we want to have opportunities for all. Because you know, no matter what your background is, no matter where in the company you are, no matter what your gender is, so it's very important to have a culture in which it's based on meritocracy. You know, to really empower that, really make it in action, not in words. And then the third layer of the high performance culture is uh, a performance-based culture. You know, a lot of companies, what happens is there is a natural spread of contributions to the company and what turns off high performers more than anything is if they are not rewarded for it, whether it's recognition or, 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 or promotion or monetarily. So we want to make sure that we reward, you know, pay for performance. You know, we reward the high performers. And of course we reward everybody, but it is important to differentiate the high performers. So, so I would say the three things we focus on is trust and integrity, opportunities for all, and pay for performance. And again, the thing, these things, the most important thing is doing it, not talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> so when you inculcate this kind of culture, obviously it reflects on the company and the products. IC design has been very critical to Silicon Valley for generations. And you are the most preferred software that people have been using. There are hundreds of not thousands of vendors who do this work. And they all want to buy your software and work. My question too is the integrally is the same, but how do you think the industry itself has evolved and where is it heading? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, the good thing now is, I mean, silicon was always important, but now it became super important. And uh, because it permeates all aspects of digital transformation. So all industries have to go through digital transformation and invariably all aspects of digital transformation require silicon and electronic systems, you know, whether it's medicine or cars or, or data centers. So we became a lot more critical and you can see that in all the governments around the world investing much more in semiconductors. And I think what is less known is of course, semiconductors are critical, but these semiconductors are so complicated and they have been going on an exponential curve, right, that all this has to be designed by software. You know, it's very difficult to design just by humans. And so we provide that software, that mathematical software, we call it computational software, to design these chips using computers. So it's super exciting to be in that space. And then the other thing that's happening is about 45% of our business is now from system companies. You know, like car companies or uh, phone companies or, you know, aerospace and defense. And they are doing more and more chip design and more and more system design. So we are investing a lot with them 
not just to do the chip design, but design of electronic systems, you know, design of, um, you know, like, you know, airflow for a car or electromagnetics or thermal simulation of a phone or even biosimulation to design of a drug development. So it's, it's, it's EDA, which is IC design, but also SDA, which is system design and analysis. So that's how what we are, that's our journey going forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shift the gears to talk about entrepreneurship. As a CEO of a fairly big company, and you have grown in that space, uh, what portion, I mean, uh, you don't have to be exact, but I'm saying everybody's different, but in your particular case and your company, uh, as a leader, uh, what portion do you think of as an entrepreneur and what portion do you think of as, as a CEO? Get us to balance both because you are in Silicon Valley, a lot of young startups always emerging on the scene. They may not directly give you the competition, but you also be on the edge to make sure that you are at the cutting edge of innovation at yeah. the same time. Oh, that's a great point. I mean, entrepreneurship is great. And we do, do like, not only we invest in innovation internally, you know, we have about 40% of our revenue invested in R&D, which is highest among all the, you know, the highest in among all the kind of big public companies. We also do several acquisitions every year. So the startup ecosystem is, is super critical to Cadence, and it has been over the last, you know, uh, several, you know, 10, 20 years. So we encourage entrepreneurship. And, uh, and the key thing is that, like, like I talked about culture, the key thing is, uh, of course, we can acquire companies and bring, like, talented teams into Cadence, but we also want to reward people in Cadence that take risks and deliver results. So the biggest problem in big companies is that they don't reward the high performers and then they have to go out and start companies and then you, you know. So we want to have a culture of innovation and entrepreneurship within the company. So that's why it's important. We have all these structures in which if somebody real, really makes a big contribution, we want to reward them in, in multiple ways. So I think entrepreneurship is not just outside. It has to be really cultivated inside the company and it's a lot more effective if done properly inside the company you know and this is one of the key things when I joined Cadence you know a while ago now you know the thing is organic innovation is super critical for these large companies and they are sometimes go astray when they don't have organic innovation so having a culture of organic innovation and then complementing that with acquisitions as they make sense is the right way to do it in my opinion yeah. Again, thank you. Uh, great company, and uh, I know it's been a little while, but again, congratulations from all of us on becoming a CEO of a great company. Thank you for coming here. Yeah, thank you, and it's great to be here. Great conference. Yeah, take care. Yeah.